Welcome everybody to the Retrograde right here on Dead Jester Cinema. What exactly is the Retrograde? Well, we go through an old movie, then when it's all done, I break the film down into four categories, and I assign a grade to each of those categories. Those being plot, characters, direction, and music. After all that is done, I take all those grades, average them out, and come up with an overall grade for the entire movie itself. But on this edition of the Retrograde, I'm going to be switching things up a little bit and doing a little bit of tweaking because on my last video, the Children of the Corn one, I got hit with a copyright and I kind of don't want to have to go through that hassle every single time I do one of these. So I've done a little bit of tweaking with the presentation and hopefully it just all turns out good. But all right, kiddies, strap in because we are going back to 1988 and taking a look at the original Child's Play. The film is the story of Andy Barkley, whose mother Karen has bought him a My Buddy knockoff called a Good Guy doll for his birthday. Unbeknownst to them though, the doll is possessed by the soul of murderer Charles Lee Ray, who was shot down in a gunfight with Detective Mike Norris at the beginning of the movie, and in his dying moments uses black magic to transfer his soul to the doll. And everything seems kind of unassuming at first, but after killing Andy's babysitter, the boy realizes that the doll is alive. And his attempts to warn both the detective and his mother fail, and after another unexplainable murder, Andy is institutionalized. At her wit's end after having her son taken from her and her best friend killed, Karen desperately tries to get Chucky to speak, but she may want to be careful what she wishes for, because after threatening to burn him, Chucky suddenly springs to life and attacks her. You stupid bitch, you filthy slut! Did you fuck with me? Hey, what the hell is that? Is he floating in midair? <laughs> Come on! Chucky eventually gets away from Karen and tracks down Detective Norris to exact his revenge from the beginning of the movie, but ends up taking a bullet to the shoulder for his trouble. That's when Chucky learns that the longer he stays in the doll's body, the more human he becomes, and his only way out is to transfer his soul into the body of the person he first revealed himself to, Andy. From here on, it turns into a race against the clock as Chucky chases Andy from the hospital back to his home where he almost successfully transfers his soul into the boy's body, but his attempt is thwarted by Detective Norris and Karen, and after unsuccessfully trying to burn Chucky alive, the trio finally kill Chucky by shooting him square in the heart, thus bringing our movie to a close. And that was a quick synopsis of Child's Play 1988. How will it fare in the retrograder? Well, Let's break this sucker down and find out. I'm giving the plot an all-around B-. The story is pretty much a crime story with the trappings of a B-horror movie kind of feel to it. Because on one hand, you got the whole Charles Lee Ray revenge thing with the detective, but then on the other hand, you have the voodoo, sorcery, occult stuff with the whole soul swapping and Charles Lee Ray trapping his body in the soul of Chucky. So it's kind of a hodgepodge between those two sort of genres. There are a lot of genuinely creepy moments in this movie, especially at the very beginning during the whole babysitter scene. But around the halfway point of this thing, as soon as Chucky opens up his mouth and starts talking, it really feels like this movie tonally shifts and almost becomes an unintentional comedy. And it is really that sort of tonal imbalance and that sort of shift from kind of a straight up horror movie into more funny stuff that really makes me kind of like knock the grade down just a peg or two. Plus some of the doll mechanics haven't aged too well either, especially when syncing the mouth movements to Brad's dialogue. But overall the plot works for this, it's very simple and concise, and for something like this film, you don't want anything over complicated and you don't want to really bog down the entire film with just minutia and just crap. All the characters here get a B plus. Alex Vincent who plays Andy is great and he has a real sincerity to his performance too. But if I am being truthful and honest, there are some moments in there where he gets a little, you know, deer in headlights and is just kind of staring off blankly. But at the same time, he was only about six or seven, I think, when they filmed this. So I can't really blame him or knock him for the performance because he was just a little kid. 
And I also really love Karen, Andy's mom, played by Katherine Hicks in this thing. Just her relationship with Andy, it feels so natural and authentic. Like, you can actually believe that they would be a real mother and son in real life. And she really showcases a very broad range. I mean, if you think about it, she goes from kind of being an exacerbated mom at the beginning of the movie to about the halfway point where she is pretty much coming unhinged and losing her mind to the very end where she becomes heroic to save her son. Yeah, she's just terrific. And Detective Mike Norris, played by Mr. Fright Knight Jack Skeleton himself, Chris Sheridan, is also pretty good. Although I do believe he's had better performances in his career, one of those being Fright Knight. And, you know, there are moments in this movie where he really does shine. Like, I like the moments between him and Andy. I like the moments between him and Karen. But there are other moments in this movie where his performance just seems kind of flat. But let's be real, the showstopper here is Brad Dourif as Chucky. You know, pick any positive superlative you want and just attach it to Brad's performance because he was just terrific. You know, you don't get a lot with him in the first half of the movie. You get that little bit where he's human at the very beginning, and then he's pretty much silent throughout the majority of the first half of this movie. But holy shit, when Chucky comes to life, it absolutely makes up for the lack of him in that beginning part, and he absolutely steals the show. I mean, shit, he's the reason why people call these things Chucky movies and not Child's Play movies. His performance has just dominated not only this film, but the entire franchise itself. The direction here gets a middle-of-the-road C. This one kind of stayed straight down the line. There was nothing really too good or bad. It wasn't setting out to be an art house horror film. It knew exactly what it needed to be, and it stuck to that. Although I do like the use of POV shots for Chucky in the beginning, which lends to the creepiness early on. Plus, I always love the shots of seeing Chucky climbing the stairs when he's coming to get Andy at the institution. There are some weird cuts in this movie, too, where a scene will just abruptly end or a scene will just abruptly start. And having worked as an editor in the past, it's something that my brain just kind of, you know, can't switch off to. And I notice it a lot more now than when I used to. And yeah, it just jars me out of the experience of the film. And like I said, it's just something I can't switch my brain off to anymore. And yeah, it might be unfair to lump the editing into the direction part of this video, but whatever. And finally, the music gets a solid A. The score crafted by Joe Renzetti is terrific, and the main theme itself is spectacular. It has a childlike whimsy to it, and not like the fun, happy whimsy, but a really dark and sinister whimsy. But it also invokes this feeling of like lost innocence, which seeing what Andy goes through in this movie kind of makes perfect sense. Plus, it also has a little bit of an Exorcist Tubular Bells vibe to it, which, I don't know, maybe that's just me hearing that, but that might be why I love this theme so much as well. So, with those four categories graded up, that brings the cumulative total up to an 84.75%, which I will round up to 85%, giving Child's Play 1988 an overall grade of a B. Which again, all things considered, I feel is a pretty fair grade. It's not a spectacularly amazing great movie. It is what it is. It knows what it is. It's just a very simple, straightforward horror movie about a killer doll. And it's just a lot of fun. But that's it for this edition of The Retrograde. What are your guys' thoughts on Child's Play? I know it has a huge, huge cult following out there. And a lot of you have actually requested that I do a ranking of this franchise. But, truth be told, I'm not completely familiar with the films beyond the third one. So I feel like it's probably best that I go through each of these individually. And then when we're all done, I will come back and do an official ranking of the entire thing. But anyway, please post your comments about Child's Play below. Do you agree with my grade? Would you grade it higher? Would you grade it lower? Post them below. And let's discuss. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. Adios and GTFO!